back to Ashton Gate. It feels so good saying that with fans here. Another opportunity, and it's onside, and it's two for Bristol City at this time, and it's in. An early goal for Bristol City, and Andy Vyman is back. And it goes clear ahead of what Bristol City, and they are level, and it's a first goal for Andy King for his boyhood club. Good afternoon and welcome to Robins TV for another instalment in this ever-changing championship season. Bristol City today welcome Derby County to the southwest, the side rooted at the bottom of the championship table. 19 points adrift as well as it stands, but led by a Wayne Rooney that is uh, very defiant, still believes all to play for this season. Bristol City come into this one off the back of a poor showing at Bramall Lane last weekend in the snow. Can they turn their fortunes around today? Here to watch it alongside me today, returning to Robins TV is Academy Director uh, Brian Tinian. Brian, welcome first of all. You have to sympathise with those travelling fans for City last weekend up there in the snow mm -hmm. uh, and, and they didn't put in the performance that, that warranted that. No, definitely not. Um... I know the staff and the players were really disappointed on um, Monday, Tuesday when they came back in and they felt they let the fans down, which they had. Um, so it's time today now to, to put that behind you. You know, they've had a good week's training, they've worked hard and now they're really ready for this game because we've got a few really tough games and games with teams who are around us that we need to start uh, getting some positive performances and results. And a lot going against City at the moment as well, injuries of course, we've yeah. heard about Andy King returning to the grass, yeah. uh, Joe Williams now missing out in, until January, yeah. I think the average age of the midfield last weekend was 21, that's a lot for some of these young players to, to take on. Yeah it is, the, um, young players only are successful when they've got good senior players around them, you know they're really important and to have Matty James and Kingy out at the same time makes it really difficult but hey listen, the professional footballers, they're here in our squad because they're good players so they have to handle the situations and um, I'm looking forward to today I think Antoine playing up front might give us a bit of a spark their centre halves are, are ageing good players but can we get Antoine down the sides and running at them and being a real handful it's time for him really to to make his mark. We mentioned that change there and looking ahead to this one Nigel Pearson in the week <coughs> mentioned sort of two key points really creativity mm -hmm. communication in midfield I don't think anybody in midfield has picked up more than one assist so far this season, so something's got to come from those players in the heart of midfield. You need to, uh, in good teams, they have goals all over the pitch and they have creators of goals. And I think that's been a, a, a real issue for us. Um, I think if Chris Martin and Andy Vyman don't score, who's going to get the goals? So I think the midfielders have got to start chipping in. Centre halves at set pieces have got to be more dominant and start scoring goals. And, and wide players have got to start creating and uh, scoring as well. So yeah. Good teams always have goals from all parts of the pitch and um, we've struggled a little bit with that. Well, let's have a look at the sides uh, that will go toe-to-toe -to -toe today. Wayne Rooney's side lost the last uh, fixture, but the mood among the fans is that they're playing with more purpose as the season wears on. Two changes for them. The first comes in goal with Kel Roos dropping out and Alsop coming in. They stick with that back four, that ageing back four of Byrne, Jaggy Elka, Davies and Forsyth. A midfield three that includes uh, Max Bird, one of the shining stars since Wayne Rooney took charge. The other change comes in a front three with lightning quick 19-year-old Festi Ebeseli coming in for Ravel Morrison. Morrison drops down to the bench alongside Colin Kazim Richards and Richard Stearman. So experience on the bench uh, if they want to call upon it this afternoon. As for Bristol City, well, Nigel Pearson hampered by injuries, of course. Two changes today. The expected one sees Atkinson come in for Nathan Baker, who continues his recovery from concussion at home. The other change sees Antoine Semenyo come in for Eamon Benarus, who drops down to the bench. It'll be Semenyo's first start of the new season. Matty James returns to the bench as well, which is a real boost uh, for the manager this afternoon. Masengo and Backinson hold down those spots in the heart of midfield. And Scott continues at right back as well with uh, George Tanner still out as it stands. Well, the Sheffield United result was a bitter blow. Let's hear from the man in charge today that intends to turn fortunes around. Nice. let's start with team selection. You talked in the week about Antoine Semenya's pace, power, unpredictability. Is that what you want to see today? Yes, <laughs> short answer. Um, he's looked, I thought he did really well when he came on last week and Always a bit of a, a challenge to get when to select somebody who's come back from 
quite a lengthy layoff if you like so um, but uh, yeah I'm, I'm always excited to see how somebody like Antoine does um, it's important he's able to if you like just free his own head up and plays play his natural game and that's what we need um, especially when you consider the experience that uh, that Derby have at the back so look it's um, just thought we needed to freshen up in some ways after after last week obviously um, Rob comes in uh, for Nathan yeah Rob you've said he kind of after the Covid situation he struggled a bit but he seems to be back to full fitness now yeah I mean look he's he's I think he's had a really positive start to his career here and um, uh, and he's made that that step up uh, of divisions um, done pretty well so far and uh, yeah good to get him back because his game is a, a little bit different to to Nathan's but good to have somebody of his caliber to come straight in we've missed a bit of experience in midfield you've got Matty James back on the bench yeah well <laughs> yeah it was a bit of a um, Matty's not had too much training but he's looked really good in training um, so just to have that little bit of extra presence on the bench experience uh, is important, uh, but I wouldn't expect to put him on too early if we needed to make a change in there. So I mean, it's it, it's we, we've got to be careful with that one. But uh, no, it's a I, I think it's a decision which um, will benefit the group. Back here at Ashton Gate, unbeaten in three here, which perhaps we haven't been able to say earlier in the season. Yeah. What do we need to get a positive result today? Well, we've got to be very mindful of the fact that f forget the uh, the league table. Derby, Derby have some good players, and and there is an element of uh, them having, I suppose, in some ways, less uh, pressure on them with with their circumstances. They have a uh, uh, they have a good balance within their within their squad, even though their squad's not very big. They, you know, they had some problems in the summer. Um, certainly re, uh, getting a squad together but I think Wayne and his staff have done exceptionally well to 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 keep their if you like their ship steady um, we've got to make sure our game comes up to scratch ourselves simple as that but um, should be a good game go well today Nigel cheers thanks Nigel Pearson there pitch side with uh, Dave Barton and Brian Obviously, the, the main change today that wasn't forced necessarily was Antoine Semenya coming back in. A lot made of his uh, recovery from injury and the power and the pace and unpredictability that he possesses. I think it's going to be a big game for, for Antoine today. I think he's going to be the one who plays further up the pitch with Chris Martin, with um, Andy playing a bit deeper in like a three-man midfield. I think the two wing-backs at home are going to be really important. Can Alex Scott get up the pitch and deliver? Because he's a great deliverer of the ball. Can Callum O'Dara do the same on the left-hand side? Got blistering pace. Can he get it burn? Can he get past him? Can he get balls in the box? Because Chris Martin and Antoine Semenyo thrive on crosses and balls in the box. So the two wing-backs, massively important. Andy Vianen making runs from a little bit deeper. And we, we mentioned the, the Derby back four. Curtis Davies, I think, is <coughs> 35. Jackie L could be 40 next year. Not necessarily the most agile players anymore. And I think the full-backs as well aren't exactly no. you know youngsters. A real opportunity to get at Derby and, and try and get those balls in behind today. I think that's why Antoine's in the team. I think that's the thought process from the manager and the, um, and the staff. So, yeah, we've got to play quality passes and balls in behind their defence when we can. And can we get behind the full-backs to get our wing-backs up? And I think if we get at them, if we get on the front foot, if we press them, if the midfield's compact and keeps the ball and is better with the ball than they were last week because we were loose with the ball, and then we can get a bit of real pressure on this back four of Derby and um, and Chris Martin and, as I say, Antoine, get crosses in the box. And, and talking of uh, back fours, mm. our back four as well, well, it looks like a five mm. uh, today. Atkinson comes in for Baker, who's mm. hopefully watching at, at home today. Atkinson, he, he took a bit of a while to come back from injury yeah. as well, following his bout of COVID. Yeah, yeah he had it bad, so it's, it's, it's dealt him a little bit of a blow on his fitness to get back. But he's back now, so... It's his job now to go and perform. He's back in the team, unfortunately for Bakes, who was, uh, I thought, playing very well. But Rob comes in for that position. Uh, Callas and Zach Viner have been, I think, pretty steady the last few weeks. So can that back three be really settled in, and let them wing backs push and go forward? We're at home. It's up to Russ to go and get at Derby. Um, let's, let's be really 
secure with our three at the back and get them wing backs flying forward. A fast start required today. Thank you very much, Brian. Right, today is Rainbow Laces weekend across the EFL. Football, of course, is for everyone, and this initiative is more important than ever. To hear more about it, let's head pitch side now with Downsy. Thank you so much, sir. And who better, of course, to, to plow on with the Rainbow Laces campaign than me and, of course, our brilliant association with the Bristol Panthers. Uh, Ryan Smith is a striker uh, for Bristol Panthers. Uh, Ryan, tell us a little bit about Rainbow Laces Day and why it's so important. I think it's really important to get everyone involved in football and sports and to show that anyone's welcome no matter what. Uh, in terms of inclusion, I mean, Things, things have got better, you know, yeah. uh, I'm a gay man as well, I've seen things improve, but in terms of the, the way to go, there is still some way to go, isn't there? Yeah, of course, and I think this is why days like this, where show support for Rainbow Laces and the LGBTQ plus community are so crucial to improving things. Tell us a little bit about the, the Bristol Panthers and, you know, when you meet and, and how it goes. Of course, we've had a long-standing association with you now, um, which is, you know, I think we were the first championship club to have an association with an inclusive team. Yeah, yeah, that's right. So we train at Imperial Sports Ground in Bristol on a Thursday at quarter to nine. Um, we've got Instagram, Facebook and Twitter. So if anyone, anyone, anywhere wants to get in touch, we can fill in more details and come along to training. Uh, we, we don't have any high-profile players in the UK yet that have come out. Uh, Josh Cavallo uh, plays for, for a team in Australia. I think he was the most recent sort of high-profile one. How long is it going to be before we see a, 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 an out gay footballer in the UK, do you think? Uh, well, I don't know, but the thing is these, these occasions help. And, uh, you know, these events might bring LGBT players to our team and then that brings them to develop and become better footballers and maybe even join professional teams. Do you not think that just once there's one, do you know, it would just make it so much easier for everybody else, wouldn't it? And that, that inclusivity would be amazing. Yeah, definitely. I think once one happens, they'll just all come. Good. The, the manager's behind us. Look, Nigel Pearson is here, and he's got his rainbow. We're talking about the rainbow laces, Nigel. It's so important, isn't it, that that we uh, have these days, and we're so inclusive. Yeah, I mean, look, I think over the last maybe 12 months, 14 months, with um, certain world events, there's been a. I think there's been a, a greater awareness within within the worldwide population of. Um, the importance of inclusion and that diversity is is not just accepted, but it becomes the norm. And I think that in itself is a huge shift. Um, I mean, Bristol as a city has experienced events that are non-sporting that have uh, really taken, if you like, the public's imagination and the normal average guy on, and woman on the street has a voice and that is very very important so look we shouldn't ever judge people on on their on how they look on what their views are I think it's just uh, a better world if we allow people to be themselves and that's it's as simple as that so as a grumpy old man hopefully people allow me to be a grumpy old man good stuff thank you very much our night and by the way Ryan's a striker <laughs> hit him up <laughs> Very good. Finally then, if people want to get involved in the Panthers, uh, where's the website? Where do we go to? Where can we find out more? Yeah, so just type in Bristol City Panthers on Facebook, Instagram or Twitter. Um, you can get the details from there. We train at Bristol Imperial Sports Ground on a Thursday at quarter to nine. Uh, your first training session's free, so everyone's welcome. Good stuff, Ryan. Thank you so much. Toby, back in the studio to you. Thank you, Downsy. Great to hear from the gaffer there. Right, just under 15 minutes to go until kickoff. Plenty more to come, including Eamon Benarus. But for now, it's a short break. We heard the UK's yogurt loving superfans wanted something super thick and homegrown. A yogurt that's high in protein, low in fat, and naturally low in sugar. Fit for breakfast, lunch, and everything in between. But such a thing didn't exist. So we made our own. Yo Valley Super Thick, lovingly made on home soil.
Paul Archer here from the Nexus Group. Hopefully by now you recognise our logo on the back of the lad's shorts. As a City fan and a Bristol businessman, I want to help as many companies as I can with their recruitment needs, especially as we come out of this awful pandemic and lockdown. And for any customer, new or old, that puts an order in with us before now, and the beginning of the next season, we'll put you in a draw to win a VIP match day experience as guests of me and the Nexus team. Hi, I'm Mark Johnson, the founder of Mojo Active. We are here in North Bristol and we've got around about 80 acres of outdoor green space and woodland area. And we can organize events for small team building right through to large corporate entertainment events for anything up to five, 600 people. We can specifically address key objectives, anything from leadership, team building, team cohesion, trust. We can tailor our activities and events to all age groups and abilities. Here at Mojo Active, we understand how important it is to get outdoors with the team, whether that's to reward excess or acknowledge the team's performance, but we can do that here for you. If you're interested in getting your team outdoors and having some fun and really rewarding them, then get in touch through Mojo Active. Welcome back to Robins TV. Not long to go now until kickoff between Bristol City and Derby County. But first, one man who's uh, pretty much done everything asked of him so far this season, Eamon Benaroos. Uh, we caught up with him earlier on this week to see what life is like in the first team. Eamon, welcome to Robins TV. I mean, it's, it's only been, what, the blink of an eye since you made your uh, your debut for Bristol City, but how was your experience of that, first off? Yeah, it was good. Um, I enjoyed it. Uh, it was a tough game, to be fair, but um, we come away with the three points and, yeah, happy. Get that fight, finally get that home win and move on. And I guess for you as well, speaking of, you know, finally, finally getting experience of being part of those match day squads as well. I understand, you know, you travelled with the team a couple of games before that and then finally given that opportunity. Yeah, yeah. So I've been like with the first team for a while now um, and the, the gaffer has just pulled me aside and he said, you'll be on the bench. Um, so when I knew I was on the bench, I just get, get got myself ready and um, yeah, had to take the opportunity when it came. So I believe you joined City at about six years old. Um, when you made your debut, did your mind go back to, to those times, not necessarily at six years old, but <laughs> perhaps as a kid coming through the academy setup? Yeah, I think after you reflect on it and you think, um, wow, it's been it's been a long time, um, but it's a lot of hard work and yeah, just trying to build myself up, get different uh, skills and qualities to help me when when the time comes, which is which was Barnsley at home. Being around this club since two thousand and nine, uh, who did you look up to when you were growing up? Well, there were a lot of a lot of good players, um, but probably back in the day, I used to like uh, Joe Emmanuel Thomas, who was a good player, um, but more recently probably. Likes of Bobby Reed and players like that at Bristol City. Mm. Well, I actually think Bobby Reed's a good example of a player that kind of plays a similar sort of style to yourself, perhaps. Yeah, yeah. Um, attacking player. Likes to score goals as well, and he's doing well at the minute. So, yeah, similar. And now that you're in the squad on a, a daily basis, is there anyone in the, the current squad that you're sort of looking up to as, for inspiration or that you've connected with? Um, yeah, I think we've got some good players here, to be fair. Um, I like Casey Palmer. He's a good player. Technically, very good. Um, but yeah, there's a lot of lot of good players here. Now, Brian Tinian has been singing your praises in on this programme and in interviews for a while now. What what influence did he have on you? Um, a big one, probably one of the biggest. Um, he's helped me and uh, got me the opportunities to be fair. So like speaking to the manager and trying to 
explain my style and how how it can help um but yeah he's been good he's helped me um told me things i need to work on as well but yeah he's given me a lot of opportunities and and also told me what to do better as well which is good and what about your family i mean does football run in the benarus veins if you like um so my dad used to play when he was younger not to a, a high, very high level but yeah he, he loves football my brother loves football as well so I'll say it runs in the family, but not, not to the highest level. Not to a professional level. Yeah, yeah. No. <laughs> uh, Belarus, where does that name come from? So my dad's Algerian. He came to England uh, when he was about 20, I think. Um, and he married my mum, who's fully English. But yeah, North Africa, Algeria. Okay. Um, now, some might have missed your uh, debut against Barnsley a few weeks ago. So what type of player can we expect to see out there? Um, I think I'm... Technically, quite good. Um, I just I like scoring goals. Trying to, I would say, get the fans off their seat. Try and excite them. Um, I do like a skill, but when when I need to, just keep it simple and get end products. Really, that's what I've been trying to work on. Uh, now, of course, you are only eighteen. So, what are the uh, the aims and ambitions for Eamon Benarus over the next fifteen to twenty years of sure. your career? Um, I set my targets quite high, to be fair. So, I would like to be playing at the highest level um, in the Premier League. Uh, hopefully that's with Bristol City and yeah hopefully playing for for my country whether that's Algeria or England um, I would, that's one of my main ambitions. You've actually got a few England caps already haven't you for the for the youth teams? Yeah I've, so I've played with the 17s um, hopefully I can uh, link up again with them soon but yeah we'll see how it goes. Well hopefully we'll be able to watch that early start of your career here on Robins TV and your rise up through the ranks. Thank you. Eamon Benarus there, very mature for an 18-year-old, and he um, had some nice words for you in there, in there, Brian. But the, you know, the, the future's bright for for Eamon. We um, we pride our academy on having boys who want to work hard, and want to train hard, and want to listen, and want to want to do the very best they can. And uh, Eamon's a fantastic young person, um, delighted um, where he's got to, and I think where he can go is even higher. So yeah, really pleased for him, pleased for Alex. Great lads, great workers, great ethic. So, yeah, they've got big, big futures. Big, big futures. Thank you, Brian. Well, exciting times ahead for Bristol City. But today, 77 times these sides have faced each other over the years, and there's been some cracking encounters. Let's head back to 2017 for a classic. <laughs>
more of that today, please. It's at this point, though, we say goodbye to those of you that are watching today on YouTube and Facebook.